It looks like a scrambler, but it's not. It's based on the Himalayan, but it's very different. So what is the Gorilla 450 all about? Let's find out. You know when the call is calling. So guys, we've been riding the Gorilla 450 for the past couple of weeks. It has been an interesting experience. Uh, much so because when we rode the Himalayan, I was telling Harsha over here that I would love to see this engine on a roadster. And the Gorilla is here. That's or, exactly what it is. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. And wow, we had a lot of fun on this motorcycle. So there are a lot of good bits. There are a lot of uh, not so good bits. Uh, let's get into the details. So Harsha, what do you think about that engine, the Sherpa engine on the Gorilla? We already liked the engine in the uh, Himalayan 450. Yeah. This feels totally different from uh, Himalayan uh, 450. Yeah, the entire dynamics is different because uh -huh. Himalayan is an you know, adventure bike. Yes, expectations are different. Yeah. It is actually weird for me that this engine is on the Himalayan because you want more torque on an adventure yeah, bike, yeah. right? Like, um, torque on the low end. Especially on the low end, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. But this one is like everything is above 3-4,000 RPM. Yeah. Yeah. That said if you are really pushing the Himalayan it's nice yeah. but yeah. you know some places especially you want the bottom end when you get stuck in some places you don't want to like rev it out and just spin out to be yeah, you want yeah, that yeah. push rather than that full spin right yeah. so that way I've always thought that engine would be best on a roadster mm -hmm. even though it looks like a scrambler but this is actually more of a road bike than like a scrambler bike yeah. the tires and the look of it everything looks makes like a, a off-roading uh, tires or uh, everything but yeah. it's not <laughs> No, it's not. It's, it's a proper road, road bike. bike. Road bike. Hundred percent. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> it is fun. It is really fun when you're in the city and you know first gear and when you slot into second when the revs are higher than three thousand RPM. This thing is like it like, just takes you. It just like, takes you and pulls you away. It reminds you of something like the first gen Duke three ninety. Yeah, yeah. It it it's yeah. something it reminds you of that that raw feel, but with it's more polished than that bike. The power and everything was above five six thousand RPM. Yeah, yeah. So this one you get it much more earlier. First gear and when you put it into second gear, when the drives are above three thousand. The moment you shift into a, or when you release the clutch, there is a jump. Yeah. But after that, it's really linear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only that initial pull, it's there. Yeah. yeah. That initial, that that first, there is like, whoa. then it's everything is like, again, okay, I can manage this. But that one, even after riding it for like, you know, one, two weeks, still catches you by surprise. Because that 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 uh, first to second and when, when the revs are high, especially, is really something like whoop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even even the third gear is like that. That is something newer riders probably should yeah. be a little bit uh, you know careful about till you get used to this bike. But after that, it's a whole lot of fun. Coming to refinement and things like that, I mean, typical single cylinder higher up in the revs, there is yeah. there is some vibes that come in. But this is much more refined than the Himalayan. Himalayan at the cruising speed, say like 90 to 110, you had some vibes which annoying were a bit vibes. annoying vibes. Yeah. It was not so that great. Cruising, uh, that is where you cruise you with that bike, yeah, but in, you have vibrations. Yeah, in Indian context, yeah. that 90 to 110 is probably where you cruise on the highways. Yes, yes. And there you had the vibes. This, not so much. This is much, much much well sorted than uh, vibes come after like 130 140 yeah the typical single cylinder yeah, it's fine that is absolutely fine and expected if it's not there you know you need to find out what's what's wrong <laughs> <laughs> coming to things like mileage and all i think it is hovering around the 24 25 mark for it, us yeah the for, way we were riding the way we it. were riding it so yeah. If you're really mileage conscious, you can put it in the eco mode eco and then mode. you might you might get closer to 30. I would recommend <laughs> that way that this bike to be ridden is that fast flowing yeah. and you know, that sort of a bike because yes. it doesn't like to be ridden slow. It, it feels much more fun when it's, you know, unleashed. Even in eco mode, that power won't come down that badly. Yeah, okay. just On the Himalayan, the difference was there. That there was so much of difference in eco mode and performance. Mode. Okay, okay. But uh, in Gorilla, the uh, difference is not much. Okay. When you are having a pillion, instead of having that pull, yeah. you can just use it in eco mode and you can... It's, the, just, it's just more linear. Mellows things down. Yeah. Okay. But uh, honestly, I did not ride in eco mode. So whatever eco mode feedback is coming <laughs> from him. 
I actually totally forgot to ride it in eco model. Let me be honest. <laughs> yeah, I was trying it in city, and I was having a pillion. It was too scary for her to sit on the bike when I was changing it to second and third gear. So I had to change it to eco mode and see how it responds. But it was better in Much eco better. mode. Much better. Okay. With pillion. With pillion. So that the pillion is not get scared. Yeah. yeah. One thing with pillion that uh, we would say is that it needs to be some sort of a backrest yes, because yes. without a backrest, pillion uh, there is no place on this bike. I mean, quite literally no place because when you give the throttle, it's going you're going to fall off. <laughs> it's that bad. And then uh, coming to tires, a lot of talk on the tires for road use. Absolutely no problem. Yes. They are oversized tires, 120 section tires at the front. In the front, yeah. Rear 160 section tires. I mean, it looks good. I mean, side profile of the bike. It looks definitely good. Line, nice chunky tires. But don't be fooled. These are road tires. They cannot handle off road. They cannot handle wet conditions that well. We had, I think, wet condition once. It was not bad, but you would would not want to be riding your usual style. You need to be a cut cut it down, bring it down to like 70 percentage uh, your style. More, you know. softer everything breaks and uh, acceleration everything especially because th- this doesn't have traction control and yeah. things like that so yeah that's about it with the tires because it looks good functions i would say 8 at 8 and a half out of 10 in in all conditions probably even 9 in dry conditions but we yeah, have about a 6 in in wet and again 6 off road because you just will just keep spinning out and the yeah. front is too fat to <laughs> <laughs> do anything off road it will just keep sliding every because of fat tire in the front yeah. so it was little bit difficult in the city also but handling is well so yeah so yeah that's what let's come to the handling it looks like a big bike it feels sort of like a big bike but when you sit on it you don't feel the whole you know massiveness of it i mean one big point that i have going for this compared to the something like the speed 400 which is pretty much a direct competition yeah. is that Speed four hundred feels small. Small, yeah, very it, small. Compact. Yeah, it's a very compact machine for riders maybe of height five nine and below. It is quite suitable and yeah, nice. Yeah. But people who are a bit taller, say five nine about close to maybe even six feet six one, they'll feel very comfortable on, on the gorilla. Bike, gorilla. Yeah, on the gorilla, it, it feels very natural. Even though the seat height is low, your knees are not bent in that much of a weird position that you know it feels. very tight for you no it feels it's very comfortable it's very, very comfortable, comfortable. that's one good thing in city handling how was your experience so city in the traffic i had been in bumper to bumper traffic uh, multiple times okay. i have didn't face any issue first time when i took it i was having a little bit heavy feel because of the fat tire in the front okay but later after like one hour or something i was used to it got used and to once it. once you're used to it it's very fun to ride in traffic yeah, traffic like you can just, just you can just go through the gaps and you just flip with the throttle, throttle and, and you just just, just, just flying overtaking is just total, you just think it and it will do it it's done yeah, yeah so exactly it's it's an overall fun bike even in city traffic you don't really feel the weight you don't really feel the little bit of tightness due to the big front tire so again nimble slight learning curve or slight getting used to that's that's pretty that, much that's it. like yeah. one or two days one or two days yeah. of it and then you're done overall comfort yeah probably the suspensions could have been a little bit more softer but i think for city use this is adequate only yeah. if you are regularly it's softer than other bike yeah, other, other bike, roadster yeah, bikes roadster but roadster bikes for city use maybe a little bit more softer considering our roads because yeah. the normal undulations and everything it handles well but those surprise small changes in the tar tar mark the tuck tuck and all you can really feel it i mean again pr- pretty much good uh, nothing really to complain about uh, but would have loved a little bit more softer rear suspension especially yeah yeah Overall build quality, I'm talking Royal Enfield and build quality is always a tricky thing because there's little bit of luck involved. <laughs> because I know Royal Enfield holders who have had bikes for 10, 12 years and not faced any issues, and then I know guys who have rolled it out of the showroom and had issues. So a little bit of luck involved there. I feel it is up to par with the current standards of yes, Royal Enfield. Yes. Yeah. like how we have seen it on the himalayan have you seen it on the new classics it is yeah the interceptor yeah it is it is up to par with that definitely not a step down anywhere it is definitely a well made motorcycle coming to features huh well you have the app connectivity app connectivity and, and all but navigation uh, and everything but yeah we we don't really bother with it we are not a big fan of the the casting connectivity and, and gadgets yeah in, in general because most more comfortable the phone 
yeah. uh, using the phone for that. One, one good thing is that the navigation is good on the. Oh, yeah, on, on the, uh, yeah, on the you can, console. You can just connect it and you can have it. Yeah, the whole map comes in the console. Yeah. Instead of fixing a mobile there, you can just. Navigate. But then the thing is that the screen still needs to be on. That they're still not figured out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that is still a problem. Hopefully, it will be solved. You know, once a lot of people complain about it. <laughs> yes, like us <laughs> and and <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Talking about that console also. It, some refresh rate issue with that even Himalayan hand. Yeah, the Himalayan with the hand. camera it flickers a lot. Yeah, so once you put it on a GoPro or something, yeah, it, it yeah. flickers. You either you need to bring down your you can't shoot it at 120 FPS yeah. or 60 FPS. You have to shoot it at 24 FPS and keep a really low shutter speed. You use ND filters. Complicated. I mean, not many people would really bother doing yeah. all that. So a standard plug and play system, you'll see the screen flickering. Maybe something to work on in future updates. Maybe there's a cost element mm. involved. That's why we are getting it at a pretty competitive price. Yeah, yeah. Direct competition for the Gorilla 450 would be in the Speed, the new T4. You have even from the same family actually, from the Hunter 350 and yeah, things yeah. like that. Hunter 350 is priced extremely well, but it's too small. It's too small. It's too small, too compact. Yeah, yeah. But, but I love this engine. This is something you should... That go for. Hunter is more relaxed, even the engine is more Yeah, but again, relaxed. it's again a peppy engine. Yeah. You have fun in the city, but imagine me sitting on the Hunter, remember? It's very small. <laughs> it is very small, the bike could not be yeah, seen. Yeah. It is that sort of a thing, but it is still the same sort of an engine feel, like you know, it likes to go fast. Yeah, they yeah. try to make a fun bike out of that as well. So this, is, this takes that DNA and elevates it further. Actually, there are a lot more things that could have been done, like for example, a little bit shorter wheelbase, a different probably a gearing, maybe from first gear onwards, a little bit more linear to make it. They have reduced the sprocket size compared to the Himalayan, but that is primarily to compensate for the wheel size change and etc. Yeah. So that you get the same sort of a feel. But yeah, they could have experimented further probably just to you know, mix it up. But yeah, it is typical Royal Enfield. What you come out after riding the bike is a big smile. Yeah. I mean, that the next day you want to ride it again. Yeah. I mean, there is very few bikes you can say uh, like that in, in today's age because, you know, there are a lot of bikes who are spec sheet kings. You know, I have all electronics, <laughs> I have yeah. everything. But then you ride it and you come back and like, oh, it's nice. But you don't be like, hey, I'm riding the whole this bike again tomorrow this is that sort of a bike i think the gorilla leaves you with that sort of a feeling and actually i feel that is or we feel that is the most important thing because we were competing as to who takes the <laughs> gorilla home and uh, you know who gets to ride it around so i think that is the most important thing about the gorilla you know spec sheets and and other things apart it is one bike that you will enjoy riding before we conclude most important question who's this bike for anybody who wants a easy daily ride bike would thoroughly enjoy it it can do the occasional tours probably the only downer is the smaller tank 11 yeah, liter yeah, tank yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend a long tour yeah on long this tour bike. Yeah. one day rides one day rides yeah, breakfast rides breakfast rides and yeah. things like that it can sit on the highway at good speeds very easily but then you would be stopping at the fuel pump very often More as well. Often, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's sort of a person who wants a, a bike which is fun for the daily use, occasional short rides, you know, sub say 300 kilometer rides yeah. would, would have fun on it. Without much, you can take it however long you want. But yeah, but you know, we're talking about best case scenarios here. And uh, heating also was not an issue in, at all. In city, I felt a little bit. Okay. Bumper to bumper traffic, everybody's Yeah, everybody's jam-packed. Jam-packed. Jam -packed. So, that heat was there. Since you are constantly doing it first and second gear. Yeah, yeah. This, you have to come to first gear. Yeah, so yeah exactly. Lower uh, speeds in higher gears, not yeah. too friendly. So, you have to, in cities, for speed breakers, you have to yeah, bring it down yeah. to first for sure. Or you have to jump a speed breaker in second. <laughs> <laughs> Which way? It can do. <laughs> it can do that as well. That is what this bike is all about. That is who this bike is for. And to summarize, fun, you can make good uh, memories riding this bike. We almost did not want to give it back. We kept asking it for uh, one more Extending movie. the, Extending the days back. So that tells a lot about the Gorilla 450. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.